Las Vegans will soon have a fast and cheap way to get to the coast. Tonight, see why the new airline JetBlue could mean so much to the city. Also ahead on Eyewitness News, why smoking is costing you money even if you don't smoke. And you know where Las Vegas is. You know where Henderson is. But do you know where the population center of the state is? George Knapp takes us there, and if you've already tried to guess where it is, you probably guessed wrong. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. A new airline has landed in Las Vegas, making competition even tighter in the airline industry. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. JetBlue Airways made its first flight to Las Vegas today. As Channel 8 consumer editor Michael Geeser explains, this is great news for consumers and maybe more bad news for other airlines. Even good news for the airline industry isn't so good. Last month, the airline saw a 26.3% bump in passenger traffic compared to 2001. But a year ago, all commercial aviation was grounded after the terrorist attacks. Yet JetBlue Airways just announced new service to Las Vegas. Why? Because the airline industry has been divided into two categories, low fare carriers and everyone else. We've had a competition of $19 fares to L.A. recently. That's filling the planes, you know, and people are traveling. So the economy's down, but we're having one of the busiest travel seasons for Las Vegas that we ever have. This travel season has allowed low fare carriers servicing Las Vegas like Southwest and now JetBlue to turn a profit. When we take a look at what's driving that, that profitability, it's brand new airplanes, single fleet type. The airplane behind us, that's the most uh, fuel efficient aircraft in class. Like the other low fare airlines, JetBlue is beating its competition by attracting the most valuable passenger, the business traveler. Business travelers right. like John Reynolds, who says he chose JetBlue for one reason. Convenience coming out of Long Beach, uh, you know, the, the hell it is getting out of LAX these days and to just pull in, there's one terminal and you're out of, you know, you're on the plane in 20 minutes. That's exactly the answer the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority wants to hear. Well, I don't think you can become oversaturated with air service. You know, we have about 8,000 new hotel rooms being built in the next few years. You can't have too much air service. But it's a different story for the airlines, especially the low fare carriers, who could very well get into a price war with each other, battling for the same customer. Michael Geeser, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. If you want to know where JetBlue Blue flies, just go to our website, KLASTV.com, and we will link you with them. So now that JetBlue is here, here's a price comparison between JetBlue and Southwest. We went through each of the airline's websites and compared the prices of a flight from Las Vegas to Oakland for a Wednesday in November flying back the next day. JetBlue offered a round-trip ticket for $146. However, the flight connects through Long Beach. Southwest offered up a round-trip ticket for $167, but that flight was direct. There are troubling financial developments at county-owned University Medical Center. The hospital lost close to $10 million last year, and county leaders are worried the financial losses could be mounting. Commissioners may wind up using funds meant for parks to bail out the hospital. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Eric Levine is at UMC. Eric. Well, Paula, everything from a soft economy to the trauma center shutting down to an increase in the number of patients that pay their bills has led to some serious problems here. And now county leaders are looking for solutions. County leaders say they were taken off guard by the budget problems facing University Medical Center. The county-owned hospital lost $9 million in the fiscal year ending in June, and losses for this year could reach $20 million. Unfortunately, after 9-11, uh, we saw a, a decrease in the number of people that were paying for their, uh, their medical care. That, coupled with some other concerns that we have about uh, things like billing, uh, cash flow, uh, accounts receivable. UMC CFO left several months ago, and now CEO William Hale is on the hot seat. County administrators are waiting on a full audit to determine why the hospital is losing so much money. They're also considering using up to $20 million of park funds to make up the deficit. Park users we spoke with say they'd like to see the county maintain its park budget if possible, but they understand how critical health care is. Tough issue. I'd say if you could be able to do it, split it both. 10%, 10 million on one, 10 million on others, because health care is always a very important issue with a lot of senior citizens out here. 
Still, no decision will likely be made until a full audit is done and a new county commission is seated in November. And the amount of the budget shortfall won't be known until that audit is completed. Eric Levine, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Thank you, Eric. UMC is required to treat people regardless of ability to pay. That means millions of taxpayer dollars to foot the bills of indigent and uninsured Nevadans. University Medical Center says the hospital provided $7 million more of free care in 2002 than it did the year before. The hospital also says the amount of free care rose by 12% in emergency rooms and by 49% at quick cares. The state says health care costs are also on the rise because of people who smoke. A new study shows just how costly smoking can be. And that has fired up the state's campaign to raise taxes on cigarettes. Eyewitness News anchor Lisa Johnson has the story. An individual will always have a right to smoke. However, you know, it's, it's incumbent upon us to protect those people that don't smoke as well. Nicole Bungum heads the health department's tobacco control program. She says the state takes in $67 million a year in cigarette taxes, but spends nearly $440 million on medical cost for tobacco-related illnesses. What we take in in taxes is, is minute compared to what it actually costs us. That's why the health department's tobacco control program supports a state proposal to raise cigarette taxes to $1 a pack. But tobacco retailers say Nevada will actually lose revenue if they raise taxes a dollar a pack. That's because they say smokers will go out of state or on the black market to get their cigarettes. That people is going to find other way to get the cigarette cheaper. The same incident happened now in California. The state really did not generate any extra income from the uh, raising the taxes. George Bitar right. and his partner own a local tobacco wholesale and retail business. Bitar believes cigarette smokers are already discriminated against by paying a heavy tax of 35 cents a pack. And I don't think it's fair trade there for the people who smoke. But state health officials say what's unfair is that for every pack sold, the state ends up paying $7.50 in medical cost. Money they say basically goes up in smoke. Lisa Johnson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The health division says the state's $440 million annual cost from smoking includes health care costs, work losses, health insurance, and other social costs. State legislature is expected to take up the matter when it convenes next January. The race for attorney general heats up in an hour-long debate on Las Vegas 1. Democratic candidate John Hunt criticized Republican Brian Sandoval for representing John shareholders in the Nevada power rate hike case. Sandoval told viewers he didn't represent the power company's interests, but only seniors who rely on dividend checks to supplement their income. Go back on the fact that if, if there are, are seniors that are relying upon that as their, their dividends, that's probably a very supplemental to their vast wealth that they have. Because I can tell you, uh, you know, and, I, and I, I'm going I'm to speculate here, but it's okay sometimes to say, you know who needs the protection? The seniors that are on Social Security, that that's the only way. And that's the only way they can pay their power bills, not seniors who need their dividends from Nevada Power. And that's why you shouldn't speak out of ignorance and speculate, because these are seniors who are on fixed incomes who rely upon those dividends to pay their rent, to buy their medicine, and to live from day to day. You can see the entire debate tonight on Las Vegas 1 from 8 to 9 o'clock. The president's drug czar arrived at Channel 8 Studios today and caused a commotion outside. He appeared on our sister station, Las Vegas 1, to voice opposition to Question 9, the marijuana initiative in our upcoming election. Supporters rallied outside. News One's Byron Gast looks at the debate over Ballot Question 9. Ballot Question 9 decriminalizes use of limited amounts of marijuana. Supporters say responsible people should be able to use the drug for medicine or recreation. But local law enforcement and the White House strongly disagree. Yes on 9! Yes on 9! Yes on 9! Yes on 9! Supporters of legalizing three ounces of marijuana rally outside of Channel 8. Their opposition is inside. White House Drug Control Policy Director John Walters appeared on Las Vegas One program face to face with John Ralston. Walters says legalizing marijuana in Nevada undermines national and local drug control efforts. We can make progress against it. We have made progress against it when we push back. It does require a consistency of message for young people, and it does require supporting the institutions that provide treatment and public safety and prevention. And pulling the rug out from under them, of course, is going to harm them. 
Walters says marijuana is an addictive, dangerous drug. He says state regulation it's, won't work it's, it's, and would yeah, contradict it's, it's, federal it's laws that prohibit that growing marijuana. marijuana. Assemblywoman Chris June Kiliani speaks for supporters of Question 9. She wants the state to bypass drug dealers and issue marijuana to adults for medicine or recreation. She says Walters misses the point. Adults are already doing it. They're, they're paying their taxes. They're loving their kids. They're reading to them at night. They're going to work every day, but they might cho choose to smoke a marijuana cigarette in their own home. They should not go, be at, at risk for going to jail or being labeled a felon for that. Assemblywoman June Kiliani also appeared on Face to Face to present her side of the issue. She wanted to debate the czar head on. He says a formal invitation was never extended. Voters have to approve ballot question 9 in the upcoming election and then again in 2004 before it becomes law. I'm News 1's Byron Gast. Back to you. Channel 8 and Las Vegas 1 are profiling each of the ballot questions to help you be more informed at the polls. The profiles air on this newscast and at 9 p.m. on Las Vegas 1 every night until next Saturday when early voting begins. Another shot in the arm for Neonopolis. Tonight see the new place to eat and drink that many say will bring new life to downtown Las Vegas. Plus, George Knapp takes us to the population center of the state thanks to new technology. That story is coming up. First, though, I want to check in with Kevin Janison for the first look at the neighborhood weather. Kevin. Hey, Gary and Paul, a few clouds out there made a pretty nice sunset and added some personality to the sky. We'll tell you how long they'll stick around. We'll take a look at the weekend and into next week. Plus, we'll have all your neighborhood temperatures, too. That's just a few minutes away. Eyewitness News will be right back. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Janison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Question 14 looks simple, but it is a costly, risky venture. 14 is well over a $3 billion gamble by politicians with our money. It puts inexperienced bureaucrats in charge of running the electric system and keeping our lights on. That puts us all at risk. Please join us in opposing 14. Watch for our mailer and return the card immediately. Question 14. The more you know about it, the less you'll like it. The ruling is in. Judge Donald Mosley guilty of violating seven judicial canons of ethics. Mosley was strongly censured, then ordered to take an ethics course and fined $5,000. Recently, the Nevada Supreme overruled Mosley six times in six weeks for being wrong. The journal said, the reputation of our judicial system will be well served if voters cast their ballots for anyone but Judge Donald Mosley. It's time someone with ethics sat in this chair. The highly anticipated Jillian's Entertainment Center and Restaurant is opening at Neonopolis in downtown Las Vegas. Jillian's will feature video games, a sports bar, and a pool. City officials and Jillian's hope this will bring more people downtown. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Cindy Caesar joins us from Jillian's with the story. Well, Jillian's isn't actually scheduled to open up until Monday, but city officials and friends and family of the employees got a sneak peek at the new entertainment center today. And Jillian's employees say people should feel safe if they decide to come down here. Jillian's is hoping to shine up downtown Las Vegas. The new 43,000 square foot entertainment center has had huge success in attracting thousands of customers a day in the 37 other cities where it exists. Jillian's has been called an adult playground with bowling, billiards, and burgers. And the Jillian's employees believe that people should feel safe coming to downtown Las Vegas to play. The Neonopolis has a great security program. Now, Fremont Street, absolutely, that is 100% um, safe and secure. The Neonopolis has 24-hour security, and I don't think it's a concern at all. As a matter of fact, I feel very comfortable with uh, our location. Jillian's chose this location because it wanted to help bring a sparkle to Neonopolis and downtown Las Vegas. Now Jillian's will open up on Monday at 11 a.m. and plans to be open until 4 a.m. every single night of the week. Cindy Caesar, Channel 8 Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Cindy.
Former Las Vegas city manager is going to back to work, but this time she's going to be working for the county. Former city manager Virginia Valentine has taken a job as an assistant to Clark County manager Tom Riley. Valentine left City Hall four months ago to spend more time with her two-year-old. Uh, her new job pays up to $150,000 a year. Las Vegas is the center of gaming and entertainment, but it's definitely not the center of the state. Tonight, see how George Knapp found the center of the Silver State. And later in this hour, more and more kids are becoming more and more overweight. See what's being done to try to stop this growing problem. Wonder why John Porter's special interest friends are attacking Dario Herrera? Because Herrera is fighting the drug companies to lower prescription costs. And John Porter, he's taken thousands from the drug industry. Dario Herrera has always opposed plans to privatize Social Security. Porter hasn't. Herrera supports real HMO reform. And John Porter, $65,000 from the insurance industry and sides with the special interests. Leadership. When Nevada Power wanted to raise our rates $900 million, Dario Herrera stood with residents and said no. With public support, he led the county's fight against Nevada Power, and the rate hike was slashed. John Porter voted for the bill that allowed Nevada Power to push for the increase, and then sat silent while they tried to charge us $900 million more. Dario Herrera will continue to fight for lower power rates. Porter sides with Nevada Power. The geographic center of our state is north of here, near the town of Austin. But what about the population center of the state? The Nevada Association of Land Surveyors used a complicated formula to calculate exactly where the population center is. They had to assume that all Nevadans weigh the same. George Knapp of the Channel 8 I team reports tonight on where the new center is and why anyone would bother to figure it out. This is Mount Rushmore. Three of these individuals, uh, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln were three land surveyors. The ancient profession of land surveying, it turns out, is darn honorable. Surveyors even get good press in the Bible because their work sometimes keeps neighbors from killing each other. The lines they draw protect property and tell us where we're heading as a society. That said, tracking down the center of Nevada's population sounds like an inside joke, something of a lark for the surveyors themselves. Is there a practical use for this thing? Practically, Perhaps not a more of a noteworthy uh, kind of a, an idea of where the population centers are heading, uh, a kind of a, a synopsis through time every 10 years of what's happening in the state. Sounds good enough. Every 10 years, the Census Bureau releases information about each state's population. Using assorted mathematical formulas, land surveyors then figure out at what point a flat version of Nevada would balance on the head of a pin. They calculate this by assuming that every citizen weighs the same. If, if we were to give a person this, their specific weight, obviously we'd have the heavier people carrying more weight than the lighter people. And rightfully so. And so what we've done is, in the calculation, is they have held each person as a fixed weight. Oh, if it were only possible. Fifty years ago, the center of Nevada's population was far to the north of Tonopah. Since then, it has marched inexorably south. The new center is, ta-da, smack in the middle of Area 18 on the Nevada test site, inaccessible to the public. The Nevada land surveyors wanted to install a marker at the exact spot, but compromised by choosing the nearest town, Beatty, putting the plaque at Beatty High School. It will not only be a feather in Beatty's cap, but there's a practical benefit. Its accuracy is about one part in 10 million. It's going to be used for a reference point for future surveys. Meaning they'll have a head start on their calculations the next time they do this. George Knapp, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. The Nevada Association of Land Surveyors, which has about 400 members, turned out at Beatty High School this morning to dedicate the new center of population marker. Public's invited to check it out whenever you drive through Beatty. Do they have a weather station? They do, and we're oh, going to show good. it. Absolutely. Right. And actually, not at the high school. It's just down the road, which isn't too far, at the <laughs> elementary and middle school. Two landmarks. A stone, so you're right. And so we're glad to have them on the map. Hey, we not only had some weather here today, but we mm. also had a little geology. You know, there was oh, a yes. small earthquake, very small. It was 2.3 in measurement. The epicenter was about three miles to the southwest of Nellis. It happened at 6.50 this morning, and 2.3 is awfully small. 
It's very difficult to feel that, but it's an earthquake nonetheless here in the Las Vegas Valley. Now from geology, we switch over to meteorology. And how about those clouds we had today? Plenty of them. They came in in waves today with most of the clouds the first half of the day. Then lots of holes in them during the course of the afternoon. Got plenty of sunshine, a little bit of a breeze. Sun went down and made for a great sunset, which we do get whenever we have these cloudy days or partly cloudy days. Pretty colors there. How about real-time neighborhood weather? First stop. Right up there in Nevada's Population Center at Beatty Elementary and Middle School. They're at 76 degrees with a light southerly breeze, humidity at 14%. We'll head over to Charleston and Torrey Pines in the valley. They're at 84 degrees, a little more wind there. Near Tropicana and Broadbent at the Wetlands Park, it is 86. And one more stop near Charleston and Sloan on the east side of town, still 87 degrees. It's 89 near Cary and Hollywood, 84 on the Strip, and 80 degrees even out near DI in the Beltway. 54 on the mound, Alamos at 73. Up at the little A. Lee Inn, it is 70 degrees, and Caliente checks in at 72. A little bit of wind today, strongest gust in town, 32 miles per hour over the south end of the valley. Outside the valley, a little bit stronger, 38 miles per hour in Boulder City, 35 miles per hour was the peak gust up in Pioche. Highs today ranged anywhere from 88 side to 96 in downtown Henderson. Then outside the valley, 64 on the mountain, 96 at the lake. Death Valley still holding on to those triple digits at an even 100. At McCarran, the top temperature 92, 8 degrees above normal. 65 was the morning low. Air quality today again in the good category. And all that rain we showed you yesterday in parts of Texas and Louisiana has now pushed into parts of Tennessee where they've had over 5 inches of rain with these slow moving showers and thunderstorms just meandering on through. In our sky was those high thin clouds coming on through and there are more where those came from. In fact, there's a huge assortment, quite a variety out here, and they'll continue to push on through. And then we've got this system back here in the Pacific. As it moves closer, this will be the weather changer, but we don't expect this to come in until next week. In the meantime, the high clouds and the weekend, we should have that space of clearing to move in right in time for the weekend. So here's how your forecast stacks up for your Thursday night. 63 degrees under a mostly cloudy sky. We'll keep those breezes up at times. Then tomorrow, not quite as much breeze. Look for a high of 83 degrees, so not quite as much warmth either, but still a wide variety of cloud cover. And your seven-day forecast, slow cooling trend. More sunshine over the weekend with highs in the lower 80s, and then more clouds and maybe even a chance for rain by the middle of next week with those highs then in the 70s and lows in the 50s. And by the way, we were out and about earlier today, so let me say hello and hi and thank you to the fine students out at Let's Sunrise Acres right Elementary School. Always enjoy going there. You know, we have a weather station there. And that one went in back in 1994 before these kids were even going to that school. So wow. third, fourth, and fifth graders. And I tell you, there are a couple of young people in that group that were extremely meteorologically intelligent. Really? I could not stump the panel. And that's unusual. So the teachers there are doing a great job, and it's always a pleasure going out to that school. That's Almost before hear. the third graders were born. Well, Dad. you know, I don't want to say that because 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 now you see them there as that they're at your level, and they say, "Hey, yeah, you came to my class when I was in the third grade." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, okay. Kevin. Trimming down the nation's teens, see the growing problem of obesity in kids, and what's being done to stop. Plus, in tonight's medical breakthroughs, sadness can be more than just the blues for some people. Tonight, see how the elderly can cope with depression. I'm Dave McCann. There are some new names atop the leaderboard. At the Inventus Classic, the world's top guns of motocross are gunning for their own championship at the MGM. And it's an all-American day for this local football player. Sports is next here on Channel 8. Hi, I'm John Hunt. Our next Attorney General faces some very serious challenges, from protecting our children and seniors to standing up against the abuses of large utilities, and most importantly, leading the battle against Yucca Mountain. I believe we need an Attorney General who is a fighter. With your help, I will take on those special interests. I will fight for our future, and I will never back down. While District Attorney Candidate David Roger has been in the courtroom putting notorious criminals like Sandra Murphy and Rick Tabish behind bars and earning a 95% conviction rate, his opponent Mike Davidson has been behind a desk and has never even prosecuted a single criminal case. So who do you think is qualified to keep criminals off our streets? A proven prosecutor or an office administrator? Vote David Roger for District Attorney. Experience counts. 
The Nevada Taxpayers Association has been fighting for taxpayer rights for over 80 years. And we're very alarmed about question 14 on the November ballot. 14 looks simple, but we have reviewed the measure carefully. And we found that there's much more to it than meets the eye. Question 14 would create over $3 billion in new debt, a simply staggering amount that's nearly double the state's annual general fund. And make no mistake about it, electricity customers and potentially all taxpayers will be on the hook for the costly government takeover of the electric system. You'll be receiving a letter explaining why question 14 would be terrible for taxpayers. Please sign the postage paid support card and send it back right away. It will cost you nothing to join, but it could save you a lot. We hope you'll join business, labor, and consumer groups and vote on question 14. We can't afford a $3 billion mistake. Question 14. The more you know about it, the less you'll like it. The Invences Classic has quite a crowd at the top or right near the leaderboard. A lot of today's low scores came early before the breezes picked up. Three-time Las Vegas champion Jim Furyk has a putt here for the outright so lead. Jim is at minus 12. He had to tap that one in to clean up. He's tied with 23-year-old Charles Howell III. This birdie putt allows Howell to shoot seven under for the day, and he and Furyk are tied at minus 12. The winds picked up in the afternoon, but the score stayed pretty low for the most part. Here's a look at the leaderboard. Bunch of folks there at minus 11. Robert Gomez had a pretty good run late in the day. The Clark High School grad is at minus 10, just two off the lead. Among some of the notables, David Duvall right there at minus 10. Rich Beam at nine under par. Former Rebels Chris Riley and Ed Fry at, at minus eight. They're doing well. John Daly's woes, well, he's, they're still continuing. We'll say he's at four over for the tournament. Shot an even par today, much better than yesterday. This is going to be a loud weekend in Las Vegas. The NASCAR trucks are at the Motor Speedway, and at the MGM, the best motorcycle riders are competing for the THQ U.S. Open. This is the richest motorcycle race in the world, with the winner getting $100,000. I won the last two years, so I'm looking forward to uh, racing this year. It's a really good track. They uh, made it a lot more technical this year, and uh, there's a lot, more, uh, a lot of more competitors this year, so it should be some good racing for sure. Racing starts tomorrow with the finals on Saturday. There are still seats available for that. Cornell Johnson is arguably the best high school running back in Nevada, and he's the only U.S. Army All-American. Johnson was honored today at Desert Pines and officially invited to play in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl this January in San Antonio. In a way, I'm kind of thankful that I've been selected to play in this. You know, it's a big opportunity for somebody from Las Vegas to play in a game like this, and I'm just happy that I get a chance to play in this. It's a huge honor for this kid as well as the program. You know, you get a kid select like this is All-American. I told our kids this is a huge honor to play with an All-American. Not too many kids get that opportunity, so it's a big deal. It is a big deal. UNLV's football team spent the afternoon getting ready for New Mexico. Here they are, getting ready. I'll be back with that story coming up in 20 minutes. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to get ready. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. There is more news straight ahead on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 6.30. The country's drug czar stopped in Las Vegas today to make his case against ballot question 9. Plus, the kids in this country face a host of health problems because they're overweight. Tonight, see what can be done to help. And later, it sounds like something from the future. Robots performing surgery. You can see it all online. We'll tell you about it coming up. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Neighborhood Weather with Kevin Jennison, and Sports with Dave McCann. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Thanks for staying with us. With the election rapidly approaching, the nation's drug czar came to our studios today to express the Bush administration's opposition to question nine. That proposition would make it legal to possess up to three ounces of marijuana in Nevada. Protesters gathered outside Channel 8 to express their support for the measure. Supporters say there should be regulated use of the drug for medicinal and recreational purposes. On our sister station, Las Vegas One, John Walters told John Ralston the measure would deal a blow to drug control efforts. That marijuana today is the single biggest source of dependency and addiction that we need to treat among all the illegal drugs. That's a fact that is not widely enough understood. The measure would have to pass this November and in 2004 before it would become law. Joining us with more on today's visit by the drug czar and the ballot question is political analyst John Ralston. 
When you talk to both sides today, why is this such a big deal, especially for the Bush administration? I think it's a big deal because just what Nevada is and is getting such national attention. Here we have Sin City, Las Vegas, <laughs> and they're trying to do this here, and everyone's making fun of us. Let's face it, nationally they're making fun of us. We're essentially being used as kind of the test tube for this out-of-state group. There are a lot of rich people involved in this. They want to come in here. They saw the medicinal marijuana pass, and they're saying, you know what? We can come in here and do this. Had CNN crew here today. You had a stringer for Newsweek here today. Tremendous, tremendous national interest. Interest in this. Do the proponents think they can get this on? Uh, you know, the, clearly the passion is with the proponents on this. You saw the mm -hmm. protest here today. I mean, they really feel that it's their right to smoke them if they got them in their houses. <laughs> and so they are really fighting hard for this. Chris June Kiliani, who's an assemblywoman who got the medicinal marijuana through, was on the show today. She's very passionate about this. She just calls what the drugs are and law trying to scare people, which of course they are. What they say, of course, is that there's reason to be scared. I'm sure like the, every other political issue that's been polling done on this, what does the polling say? It's interesting. Before any money was spent on this, it was pretty much even. It was, it was 40 444 something like that it's starting to go in the other direction now I think mostly because all the law enforcement types Stu Bell Jerry Keller all the rest have come out against it what's interesting though is there's TV on now and I think the ads for question nine are pretty good ads kind of implies a little bit that it's more medical marijuana but uh, I think those ads are pretty effective I think it's gonna be very interesting to watch this all right John thank you you betcha Thanks. Other news, the number of overweight children in Nevada and across the U.S. is growing fast. Now one state lawmaker is working for change. Channel 8 Eyewitness News reporter John Summers has that story. Kids are getting too much of this and not enough of this. And as a result, they're more obese than ever. According to the Surgeon General, child obesity has nearly doubled over the last 20 years. Teen obesity has tripled. And the number of juvenile type 2 diabetes cases is 18 times higher than it was 10 years ago. The problem is kids are eating badly and not getting enough exercise. One way schools try to get students up and moving around is by teaching them fun things they'll do all their lives. Things like dancing. Nevada Senator Valerie Weiner says that's a good start, but ad schools need to make health a larger priority. We constantly vie for the high academic numbers and the high test scores. And what we need to realize and work toward is a priority in fitness, nutrition, and healthy lifestyle. Weiner says she'll be working to make schools healthier places for children during the upcoming legislative session. Her goal is to make PE mandatory for all grade levels and have healthier lunches in school cafeterias. John Summers, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Weiner says studies show when children eat well and exercise, they learn better in school. It is the work of the serial sniper. Here's the latest on tonight's top stories. The shooting happened at a Manassas, Virginia gas station. Investigators say the bullet used to kill a 53-year-old man matches those used in eight other sniper attacks. Police are interviewing someone who may have driven a white minivan at the scene, but say so far nothing seems unusual. The family of one of the victims who survived spoke today about his recovery. As our doctors have told us, this is a marathon, not a sprint. But we are confident that we will make it to the finish line. The 13-year-old boy shot on Monday is in stable, or critical but stable condition. Today, the House voted in favor of a resolution allowing President Bush to use military force against Iraq if deemed necessary. The resolution is expected to also pass in the Senate, despite more opposition there. Senate Majority Leader Tom Daschle recently expressed his support for the resolution to show America is united. However, some senators say the president still hasn't made a sufficient case that war is necessary. Construction project on a pedestrian bridge in Marcy, New York turned deadly today when a 150 foot long span of the bridge collapsed. One man is dead, nine others are injured. The workers have been standing under the bridge pouring concrete when it came down on top of them. It took emergency crews 45 minutes to free all of the men. After school programs do more than entertain kids after classes end, experts say children who are involved in such programs are more successful and less likely to use drugs drugs or alcohol. Today, an event called Lights On After School was held to celebrate and highlight the importance of after school programs nationwide. Hundreds of school children, parents and teachers were on hand to enjoy food, entertainment and fellowship. Approximately 2,500 students in the Clark County School District are involved in after school activities. And that was our My Hometown bus there. Very good. Coming up on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 6.30, the internet will take you inside a medical procedure. Something never done in front of the world before. I'll have the story in my 8 Online. 
Plus, in tonight's medical breakthroughs, how Southern Nevada seniors can cope with depression. And Kevin Janison will tell us what we can expect from the clouds in the valley as we head toward the weekend. Clark County residents deserve a stronger police presence, quicker 911 response, and solutions to our rising crime rate. I'm Randy Oaks. I've served our community as a cop for nearly 30 years, and now I'm asking for your support. There are other cops in this race, but none have my firsthand experience at the legislature or the years of community service that have kept me in touch with what you want from your police department. As your sheriff, I'll protect our families and make our community safe. Vote Randy Oak Sheriff. Strong leadership. I think In tonight's 8 Online, you may soon be able to bet on sporting events from the comfort of your home. State Gaming Control Board has recommended giving a limited license to a company that's developed a system to take those bets. Vertigame would team up with Coast Resorts to provide the service. The Nevada Gaming Commission will make a final decision on Vertigame's license on October the 24th. Tonight's weird website is a tribute of sorts to Belly Button Lint at abc.net.au slash science you can find the results of a survey on the stuff conducted by a dr carl the study focuses on which people are more prone to lint there are also <laughs> pictures of lint we'd rather not show you quotes facts theories and much more so if you're in an odd sort of mood you might want to check it out you can witness medical history next Monday on the Internet. A robotic surgery will be webcast live for the first time in the United States. Surgery will take place at Merit Care in Fargo, North Dakota. Doctors will be operating on 81-year-old Bob Oliver, who has a history of coronary artery disease, with the aid of the Da Vinci robot. Walking, playing with my grandchildren. I might even ride horseback my son has some horses actually it's exciting to share this i guess if i really sat down and think about it you can't help to be a little bit nervous but when you're right in the operating room you pretty much concentrate on what you're doing merit care says more webcasts are planned for next year to show the latest in medical technology that's available in fargo and that is tonight's eight online we'll hook you up on our website when it happens Tonight in Medical Breakthroughs, anyone can get the blues. Sadness is a natural emotion that comes and goes. But for millions of Americans, sadness turns into depression. And this prolonged, more severe form of sadness can interfere with a person's day-to-day -day life. Tens of thousands of senior citizens enjoy their retirement in Las Vegas. They manage to stay active both socially and physically. But for some, lingering feelings of sadness hang like a cloud over their lives and may eventually affect their judgment. Severe depression, for example, can cause cognitive difficulties and uh, it can cause a decrease in the a way a person is able to cope with stress. So you don't want to get it to that point, let it get there. Major life changes, such as the loss of a spouse or retiring from the workplace, can trigger depression. But it's a problem that's treatable, and staying active helps. Things don't always run smoothly. There's always problems come up. Uh, I don't want to dwell on the problems, but there are plenty of them. And by staying and thinking of other people besides yourself, then you sublimate those problems. Besides staying active, Jacques believes that living in the present instead of dwelling on the past or worrying about the future is also helpful. We just try to make the best of each day. That's the way we feel about it. Uh, don't withdraw. Don't isolate yourself. Uh, be part of all the life that is around you. Again, sadness in a natural emotion which comes is a natural emotion which comes and goes while depression lingers. But the condition can be treated with counseling or sometimes with medication. Learning more about depression may be the first step in lifting the cloud. And that's Medical Breakthroughs, Gary. Very good, Paula. Kevin is here now to tell us more about what's going to happen outside over the next few days. Kevin. Gary, we have a nice evening in progress. We'll begin at Sunrise Acres Elementary, site of one of our 65 neighborhood weather stations. Still 87 there, up by Rampart and Lake Mead. In 
in Summerlin. It is 81. We'll venture on up to Mount Charleston and Lundy Elementary. They are sitting at 57 degrees. And one more stop will take us to the Strip at Desert Passage. It is 81 right in the middle of town. 86 near Flamingo and Boulder Highway. 84 near Buffalo and Cheyenne. 54 uh, up at the Mount Charleston Lodge. Couple of sites we have up there. And in Searchlight, it is 77 degrees. Here are some of the highs from around the west today. And 86 was the high in El Paso. Denver up to 78. Reno hit 74 while it was a cool 64 degrees in San Francisco. And speaking of cool, there's plenty of that diving right down through the midsection of the country. You can pretty much draw a line right here and figure out where the cool front is. And that where the warm is meeting the cool air, where the showers and thunderstorms are firing up as well. Very slow moving weather system and that will continue to be very soggy over the next couple of days. We've got plenty of clouds set to slice through our sky tonight and tomorrow. A little bit of a hole just in time for the weekend we might add and then more cloudiness next week with a little bit of a change to the weather. Tonight clouds plenty of them 63 for the low temperature and breezy at times but the winds should behave themselves and stay less than 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow look for a high of 83 degrees not quite as warm but still just quite as cloudy. Out at the lake, look for a high of 88. The water is at 79. And Mount Charleston tomorrow will have a high temperature of 63 degrees after a morning low of an even 40. Here comes your seven-day forecast. And there's a slow descent in temperatures. In fact, we'll go from the 80s to the 70s as we make our way through the seven-day period with a varying degree of cloudiness. More sun over the weekend. You know, I get big money from the Chamber of Commerce just for saying that. This is wonderful. <laughs> exactly. And then the clouds come back early next week and maybe even a chance for rain, we're hoping, by the middle of next week. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Sure. The weather's been unusually good for the Invensus Golf Classic. Yeah, we just got to get through three more days. You think he can do it? I can it? pull it off. You yeah. think so? He can do it. Well, we'll see. Two days down, three to go at the big money Invensus Classic. We'll show you the leaderboard. John Robinson's Rebels are getting ready for homecoming against New Mexico. And the Running Rebels are looking for a Super Saturday as well. Sports is coming up here on Channel 8. We know that Dario Herrera took a $42,000 no-bid housing authority contract from his campaign supporter. A local businesswoman said she was manipulated into splitting the $84,000 fee with Herrera. She described it as a sham to funnel the money to Mr. Herrera. Now housing authority officials announced Herrera's original deal violated the authority's policies. After being criticized, Herrera said, when is this going to end? Asked Dario, when is it going to end? You know, it's pretty simple to me. We elect people to be leaders, to protect our families, to stand up for us. We vote for them because we trust them to do what they say. For those of us who run for office, that trust needs to be taken very seriously. It needs to be appreciated, cultivated, and most importantly, never betrayed. I'm Rory Reed, and I want to be your county commissioner. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by Nevada Federal Credit Union. Jim Furyk and Charles Howell III share the lead at the Inventus Classic. Both are at 12 under par. At the under, other end of the leaderboards, our friend John Daly, the crowd favorite, finished the day with an eagle to stay at four over par. But he's 16 shots off the pace, going to struggle to come near the cut. Here's another quick look at the leaders. Local product Robert Gomez had a great round. He finished a short time ago at 10 under par. That's just two shots off the pace. UNLV opens conference play Saturday against New Mexico. They're also hosting a bunch of alumni this weekend. Chris Matthews reports it's homecoming for John Robinson's Rebels. Homecoming parades and parties will dot the campus this weekend. However, it's business as usual at Rebel Park. It's homecoming, but more importantly, it's UNLV's conference opener. 0-0, zero, zero, and if we go 1-0, and oh, we can jump right to the front of the pack, so that's going to be fun. UNLV's homecoming record is 21-13. and 13. It's a game the players never overlook. To me, I've always got up a little more for, you know, homecoming and, you know, the big games. No, it's definitely something special, you know, end of the season, end of the year, you know, five years being here, so I'm looking forward to it. We're going to have alumni coming back this weekend, uh, checking the game out, fans will come, students will come. I mean, it's a big week, it's homecoming. If it's homecoming, to sit with the queen, there must be a king. I'm no king for this one. I just want to play football and just go have fun. <laughs> I would enjoy that. Yeah, I need my teammates to nominate me. I'm all over it. I guess if there's a homecoming king and queen, you want to be the king this weekend. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, sir. These kings are on a mission, hoping to conquer New Mexico. With the Rebels, Chris Matthews, Channel 8 Eyewitness Sports. Thank you, Chris. Saturday is also a big day for the running Rebels as basketball practice officially begins. Just get out there and get acquainted a little bit. We've got only, only really four new people, and two of those guys did a lot of stuff with us. Uh, so I think we're, we're not going to have to spend quite as much time, I hope, teaching, spend a little bit more time playing and, uh, and, and getting ready. Our guys have been very, very good in the, in the breakdown drills that they've done. We've been able to work with the NCAA rules, let you work with a limited number of people. We've done that. They've done well with the weights. Uh, they've done well with the running. So uh, this has been a good bunch. So let's, let's get out and see what we can get done. It's going to be a very entertaining year with those guys. Extreme hockey is alive in Southern Nevada. The Las Vegas Royals will begin semi-pro play at the Santa Fe Ice Arena on November 1st. Basically what's going to happen, this, this will be called the Senior Men's Elite Division. And what that provides is a group of former IHL and NHL players, as well as a lot of the young and up-and-coming talent uh, that are trying to break into the IHL and NHL. We think this is going to provide a great platform and a great showcase for these guys to play. All right, Giants lead the Cardinals one zip in the fifth. We'll show you highlights at 11. Okay, Thanks, we'll Dave. be right back. Dario Herrera now claims he slashed power rate hikes. Really? A Las Vegas Sun columnist said there was no connection between Herrera's posturing and the slashing of rate increases. Another story said Herrera only called a sham hearing and tried to make it sound like leadership. Dario Herrera just can't tell the truth. Maybe that's why a leader in Congress recently called Herrera the most ethically challenged candidate in America. We can do better. John Porter, a congressman we can be proud of. They say life is full of choices, but sometimes there's only one choice, like your power bill. That's why when Nevada Power announced massive hikes, Aaron got to stop the gouging. Aaron Kenny supports a public power company that will cut rates and save consumers billions. But Lorraine Hunt takes thousands from Nevada Power and refuses to support public power. Life is full of choices. On November 5th, choose Aaron Kenny. Teller? Have you seen Teller? No. Are you guys seen Teller? Nope. Teller! Teller been in here? Nope. Hey, Pin, check this out. Teller! Have you seen... Have you seen... Teller! Have you seen Teller? Teller! 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 Pen and Teller. Living in Vegas. Live at the Rio. Up tonight on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 11, a new twist in the hunt for the woman involved in the disappearance of a toddler earlier this week. Police tonight say this woman is not who she claims to be. Plus, several families are homeless after fire destroyed everything they own. Wait until you hear what caused this devastating blaze. All of that at 11. KLAS is providing free airtime to qualified candidates in the congressional races to raise voter awareness. Tonight, the candidates in Congressional District 1 talk about the most significant difference between themselves. And that's it for Eyewitness News for now. You can watch that, and we will see you tonight at 11 o'clock. See you then. I strongly support Medicare prescription drug coverage that is available to every senior with guaranteed benefits, choice of drugs, and pharmacists. My opponent is against this plan and wants a greatly scaled down program run by insurance companies who get our tax dollars but provide no guaranteed coverage or choice of drugs or pharmacists. I'm totally committed to protecting guaranteed Social Security benefits and I will not risk the Social Security trust fund in a stock market ever. My opponent will not make this commitment. I have a strong record supporting our public schools, schools that serve the vast majority of our young people. I fight every day for safe and drug-free schools, after-school programs, and for funding to build more schools and hire more teachers so we can provide quality education for every child. My opponent wants to take our tax dollars and put them into private schools, a disastrous scheme to privatize education that would destroy our public schools. I'm Shelley Berkeley, and I'm asking for your vote. I'm Lynette Boggs McDonald, 
The most significant difference between me and my opponent comes down to a single word, trust. Our senior citizens need someone they can trust to fight for them to create a prescription drug program in Congress. While my opponent has attacked Governor Kenny Gwynn and his Senior Rx program, I have supported the governor and will work to make Senior Rx a national model. Nevada's small business community needs someone they can trust to vote for their interests. My opponent votes against them 85% of the time. They deserve better. I have been endorsed by the Clark County OBGYN Society. They trust me to help them in the current medical crisis in Southern Nevada. We need someone we can trust to get this important job done. Finally, I believe ethics matters when it comes to public service. Anyone who would advocate political payoffs or preferential treatment in exchange for favors does not deserve your trust. If you want a Congresswoman we can be proud of, I want to be your voice in Washington. Closed captioning is brought to you by the neonatal intensive care team at Valley Hospital, providing advanced medical care for Southern Nevada's tiniest babies. Meet John Hunt, candidate for attorney general. Federal court documents show in 1995, John Hunt defended a fraudulent telemarketer who used a phony children's charity to scam senior citizens out of $360,000. And now Hunt has accepted nearly $160,000 linked to a faulty mortgage broker whose company was seized by state regulators. Telemarketers, fraud, questionable contributions, meet John Hunt.